that I could be attracted uh, to a man while I still am very attracted to a woman. So we, we coming to you live, um, Diddy Late Nights. Um, when anything can happen, I'm just vibing, so why? 50 Cent has announced that he will be executive producing the documentary on Diddy, Surviving Diddy. At Chris Knighty's wedding, he told me to take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, f what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let me move, man, before I do something. You're gonna make me mess up the wedding. Hey guys, guess what? 50 Cent is seemingly stirring the pot again. You know how he's never afraid to call out anyone, no matter who they are or what they do. Well, now he's supposedly gearing up to spill some serious tea about Clive Davis's recent party. You see, Clive Davis throws this annual pre-Grammy bash, and let me tell you, there have always been rumors floating around about what really goes down at these shindigs. Some shady stuff that us regular folks aren't privy to. But fear not, because 50 Cent is apparently ready to spill all the details. Rumor has it that he's got some disturbing videos from the party, and he's not holding back. But hold on to your hats, because there's more. Rumor has it that Diddy might be making an appearance at this bash. You know Diddy, with all his past controversies and lawsuits, dude's been laying low, but now he's supposedly showing up to this party? Can't keep the party boy away from the party, I guess. So just how wild are these Clive Davis's parties that 50 Cent is willing to risk it all to expose? Well, buckle up, grab some popcorn, because this is shaping up to be one heck of a ride. So Clive Davis, a a true industry legend, no doubt, but like most big shots in the biz, he's got his fair share of scandalous controversies. There have been allegations thrown at him, questions about his personal life, and whispers about the not-so-glamorous side of the annual parties he throws. And let's not forget those rumors about him supposedly making Diddy get on his knees for funding Bad Boy Records, if you know what I mean. But before we dive into all that juicy stuff, let's talk about 50 Cent, he just can't resist poking fun at Diddy. This time, he's taking a jab at the Bad Boy boss for deciding to skip the 20 2024 Grammy Awards. Yep, even though he's nominated in all, a rep for Puff Daddy, or Diddy, whatever you call him, confirmed he won't be showing up at the ceremony next month. Posting a screenshot on Instagram of Hip Hop DX's report into the matter, 50 commented, Wait, Puff, I think you should go. They not gonna give you no trophy, LMAO, get the F out of here. Now, Diddy's up for the Best Progressive R&B Album Award for The Love Album, off the grid, competing against some heavy hitters. But even if he snags the trophy, he won't be there to collect it in person, and 50 Cent, true to form, is not letting Diddy off the hook. He's been throwing shade about Diddy's SEX preferences, calling him gay and whatnot. Now, to add more fuel to the fire, there are whispers that amidst all the lawsuits and chaos in Diddy's life, Clive Davis might be considering distancing himself from the situation. This is pretty wild, considering how tight these two have been. Despite facing some serious heat with SA claims from a trio of women, he's apparently still on the guest list for Clive Davis's legendary pre-Grammy bag. Yup, the insider scoop says, Puffy is like the party's VIP, always invited, no questions asked. Now here's where it gets interesting. An eagle-eyed source noticed that Diddy wasn't exactly stealing the spotlight in the party's digital invitation this time around. Last year, the invite practically screamed Diddy with three glam shots, but this year it barely gave him a cameo behind Jay-Z and Beyonce from the 2020 shindig where he got honored. Now cue the gossip mill. People started whispering that maybe he got the boot or, you know, was scrubbed from the invite. But a rep for Clive Davis swooped in to clear the air, saying, Hold your horses, folks. Puffy wasn't scrubbed. Each year, the photos included in the pre-Grammy gala invitation are updated. Different artists, guests, and performers are changed from year to year. You know, new faces, new vibes. So, what's the verdict? Are Diddy and Clive still tight? Or is this just another PR spin? Who knows? But it seems like Diddy is still very much part of the party scene, at least according to the invite. Now, let's dive into the juicy drama between Clive Davis and Diddy. Word on the street is that 50 Cent is itching to spill some tea and let the world in on the real scoop. What's the deal with these two music moguls, and why does 50 Cent seem dead set on exposing it all? We're all aware of Diddy's heavyweight status in the music biz, founding the iconic Bad Boy Records and managing big names like the late notorious Big and R and B sensation Usher. The burning question: How did Diddy build such an impressive empire? Well, the rumor mill has been buzzing for years about Clive Davis and Diddy being more than just industry colleagues, and it looks like the truth is finally out. Sources spill the tea, claiming the two have been an item for a solid five years, and they weren't exactly discreet about it. From epic parties to hush-hush meetups, it seems these two have been living their best lives. But wait, Diddy's claiming he's been a victim too. Apparently an intimate
slave to Clive Davis if you catch my drift. Now, if you really think about it, it's kind of weird. Diddy was just an intern at Uptown Records in 1990, got the boot in 1993, and suddenly he's starting Bad Boy Records in cahoots with Arista Records, owned by none other than Clive Davis, the big shot behind TLC, Whitney Houston, and Brandy. Now, Bad Boy Records became a massive hit, but back in the day, Diddy was pretty much a rookie in the game. So, here's the mystery. How did he convince Clive to bankroll his record label? It's not like Clive was super confident about Bad Boy Records making it big. He admitted it himself. In an interview, he spilled the beans, saying Diddy basically pressured him, claiming that hip-hop was going to take over the top 40. Sounds unlikely, right? But Diddy played him some Craig Mack and Notorious Big tracks when they were still under the radar, and Clive saw the music landscape shifting. He said, Sean Combs convinced me that Top 40 was going to embrace hip-hop. It seemed so unlikely then, but when he played me Craig Mack's Flava in Your Ear and Notorious Big Material when he was totally unknown, this 21, 22-year-old guy was seeing how music was changing. The thing is, Bad Boy Records was Diddy's dream. Not exactly Clive's cup of tea, but guess what? Clive still threw in the cash. Now, with all the new info spilling out, it seems we're finally getting some answers. Jaguar Wright, who's been keeping an eye on Diddy for a bit, dropped a bombshell. She's claiming Diddy allegedly was R-worded and S-aid by his mentor Andre Harrell, the Uptown Records starter. And hold on to your hat for this one. She's saying Andre himself was allegedly S-aid by Clive Davis. She said, my focus right now is Sean Combs. He is a S-E-X-T-F-K, and he is using music and entertainment to S-E-X-T-F-K. She continued saying, from what I've heard and from sources I would consider reliable, it really doesn't matter if it's boys or girls. I don't think S-E-X has anything to do with gender at this point for Sean. I honestly think that he's just an extreme narcissist who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most probably because he was victimized by his mentor who loved to control people and his mentor was Andre Harrell, who was mentored by Clive Davis. So here's a wild tidbit from Jaguar. She spilled, I'm telling you, I don't know what happened between Andre and Clive. What I do know is that Andre got passed over. Like how do you go from being the president of Uptown and losing your entire company to your intern? Like Puff started out as an intern. Okay, tell us why, tell us why. Because he's a trafficker. Okay. And he's using music and entertainment to sell who loves power. He loves the ability to manipulate and control people. Why? Most likely because he was victimized by his mentor. This is a head scratcher because the numbers just ain't adding up. Diddy's always been giving props to Clive, even in 2019 after snagging the Grammy Icon Award. He was like, Clive Davis and Arista Records gave me a chance when I was starting Bad Boy Records. He was one of the first industry executive to really believe in me. I'm forever grateful for him. But here's the kicker. If the latest buzz is on point, Clive didn't fund Bad Boy and sideline Andre just because he believed in Diddy's talent. Nope, it might have been because there was some secret business happening between Clive Clive and Diddy. Also, Clive Davis, the big shot in the music scene, has had some S.A. allegations tossed his way. And get this, he's come out as bi too. After a couple of marriages and divorces, Clive went on a journey of self-discovery, digging into his attraction to men. In a pretty brave move, he spilled the beans about not being strictly hetero, even though he thought he was for the first 50 years of his life. You know, going on, it was just something that whether you could be mm -hmm. attracted um, to the to the person regardless of gender. After this revelation, Clive decided to dive into a relationship with a guy, figuring it was the next chapter in his book at the time. Fast forward to 1990, he got into a monogamous thing with a mystery male doctor, and that ride ended in 2004. Clive's been pretty upfront about it, saying, I never felt shame. No, I felt puzzled. The subject of BI really needs much more discussion. It's a status that does exist. Legend has it that Clive's now in a solid relationship with another dude, going to events and jet setting together. But the name is on the down low. Nevertheless, Diddy seems to be the go-to guy for Clive at events. And it's not just a casual run-in. Now, hanging out at the same parties might not be concrete proof. But when you factor in that both Clive and Diddy are openly gay and constantly spotted together, it's kind of screaming connection, right? Their tight bond has been a thing for a while. And during this time, Clive's been in a committed relationship with a guy, while Diddy's faced some whispers about being in the closet. Considering all this, the idea that there might be a romantic spark between these two isn't far-fetched. Clive's been pretty open about his SEX and relationships, but he's not shutting down these rumors, adding some weight to them. And Diddy's keeping mum too, but his actions have raised a few eyebrows. Now check this out. 
Keef D, a gangster who's no stranger to the celebrity scene, once caught Diddy doing some sus stuff with another dude at a party. And guess what? Diddy's ex-bodyguard, General Deal, spills the beans on multiple occasions hinting at Diddy's preferences. One time, Gene walks in on Diddy and some rapper strolling out of a room, rocking nothing but towels. Clearly, Diddy wasn't too concerned about Gene catching on. Puff and Tupac was like a couple, it seemed like to me. Uh, it was just a lot of weird shit going on, you know what I'm saying? Puff and Ja Rule runs out the room. Puff got his towel, Ja grabbing his towel, but they butt the naked. Even after his ex-wife, Kim Porter, passed away, the former bodyguard spilled that when they were hitched, Diddy was playing the field with both guys and gals. Diddy's also been eyeing some male artists. Rumor has it he made a move on 50 Cent, who shut it down real quick. There's this story about Diddy inviting 50 Cent for a shopping spree, but some folks think there might have been more on the agenda than just retail therapy. 50 Cent shared the memory. He recounted the moment at Chris Lighty's wedding, expressing his surprise and humor. He said something to me a long time ago at Chris Lighty's wedding. He told me he'd take me shopping, he said. I looked at him like, what did you just say? Let me move, man, before I do something. You go make me mess up the wedding. No, that's something a guy says to a girl. At Chris Lighty's wedding, he told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let me move, man, before I do something. You gonna make me mess up the wedding. Also, 50 Cent has been questioning Diddy's orientation for a long time now. Now, 50 hasn't really brought any concrete evidence to the table, but the public chatter kicked off around March 4, 2014. That's when 50 dropped an Instagram bomb, posting a pic stitch featuring Diddy, Rick Ross, and ex-record exec Steve Stout. In the pics, there's Steve and Diddy hugging in pink shirts, and another one where Diddy and Ross look like they're about to lock lips due to some awkward angles. 50 captioned it with a sly, I ain't saying nothing, but something ain't right. El Mao hash some Saudio. The post disappeared pretty quickly, but the speculation stuck around. So three years down the line, 50 Cent kept the rumors alive by sharing a pic of Diddy hanging out with openly gay filmmaker Lee Daniels, hinting once again at Diddy's supposed attraction to men. Then, the next year, 50 Cent posted a pic of himself surrounded by stuffed animals, jokingly claiming he was recovering from pettiness and playfully suggesting that everyone would turn gay under Diddy's leadership. In the caption, the rapper wrote, Sorry, I can't help you guys anymore. Soon you'll all be gay and happy. You're all now under the leadership of Puffy Daddy. Report to the nearest rainbow. Hashed in off thieves Jan 19. It looks like 50 Cent was keeping the banter going with a mix of humor and playful insinuations. Usher's got some tales too from his time at Diddy's crib. According to Usher, he got an eyeful of adult stuff, substances, and some other sketchy stuff when he was just 13. In fact, there's this slip up where Diddy accidentally spilled the beans about waking up to Usher in a video. Yeah, but you were 13. What were you I saying? I went there to see the lifestyle. Right. And, and I saw it. And it was, <laughs> and it was, but I don't know if I could indulge and understand what I was even looking at. It was, it was pretty wild. Another person is actor and choreographer Columbus Short, who recently shared a video claiming Diddy tried to get him to come to his hotel room at 3 a.m. In a video, he straight up said Diddy tried to pull him into a late night hotel room situation at 3 a.m. talk about a bold move. Columbus ain't keeping quiet about it either. He's like, I'm snitching, I'm snitching in the kitchen. Columbus shared the story, saying he got a random call from Diddy in the middle of the night when he was still married. Diddy was all, why weren't you at the BT Awards? Columbus being a married man and all was like, uh, I'm in bed with my wife, man. Diddy, unfazed, dropped the bomb that he was at the Beverly Hills Hotel, just chilling solo. I'm snitching. I'm snitching in the kitchen. Diddy. Got to tell on him. He, he tried it on me, so I know it's true. But here's a bombshell. An unnamed guy has come forward, accusing Diddy of some serious allegations dating back to 1989. The guy claims he was SA'd by Diddy and a friend after an off-campus party at Howard University. The guy says, I know this is random, but my name is blank, and I was SA'd by Diddy and a friend of his on April 15, 1989 in DC. It has taken a lot of strength for me to get to this stage of self-assurance, but I now know I have nothing to be ashamed of. I attended Howard University the same time he was there, and I was taken advantage of after an off-campus party. I will be the first to admit I was inebriated. Diddy noticed I was intoxicated and offered to give me a ride back to my dorm. I trusted him at the time because we were acquainted with one another because we had economics class together. This man went on to spill some explicit details about how Diddy allegedly lured him into his apartment where another guy named Lorenzo was waiting. According to the accuser, he was and both of them took turns doing some really inappropriate stuff. Now remember, all of this is just the guy's side of the story, but he's not taking it lightly. 
He's prepping to sue Diddy, getting all his documents in order, and he's dead set on making Diddy pay for what he says went down that night. It's a serious situation, and he's adamant that it changed him forever. Now here's a wild theory floating around. Some folks think Diddy learned how to deal with problematic artists from Clive Davis. There's this talk that Clive might have taken out some artists causing him headaches, like Whitney Houston. We all know Whitney passed away due to substances, but some online theorists beg to differ. They believe Clive orchestrated Whitney's exit because she was getting older and being swapped out for a younger artist like Brandy. The twist? Some people think Clive had someone go to Whitney's hotel room and take her out, making it look like a substance-related incident. This theory got a bit of backup from an investigator who claimed Whitney was taken out by high-end dealers she owed big bucks to. According to him, there were defensive wounds on Whitney, making it unlikely she took herself out. Here's the weird part. When the news broke about Whitney's passing, they told Clive Davis, who was hosting a pre-Grammy party at the same hotel. Clive got the alert before the party party, and instead of canceling, he went ahead and threw a massive bash. Some folks say it looked like he was almost celebrating Whitney being taken out. Now here's where things get even weirder. Just two days before Whitney's passing, she crashes an interview with Brandy and Clive Davis. She hands Brandy a secret note and nobody knows what was written on it. Rumor has it, it was a warning to Brandy about Clive, but the contents remain a mystery. <laughs> And Whitney isn't the only artist linked to Clive Davis who passed under mysterious circumstances. Lisa Left Eye Lopez, too, left us in a puzzling way while under Clive's label. Some folks are convinced that whatever happened to Lisa is tied back to Clive. Now shift the spotlight to Diddy, and it's like deja vu. Artists and people around him tend to pass away mysteriously, just like we saw with Biggie, Kim Porter, and the whole alleged Tupac situation. It's like a strange pattern or something, don't you think? Let's check out some examples. Jaguar Wright dropped some bombshell thoughts about Biggie's death, hinting it might not have been a random tragedy but a strategic move by Diddy and Bad Boy Records. According to her, Puffy's been cashing in on Biggie's name longer than the dude was even alive. Imagine that. Biggie hadn't even hit 25, and it's been over 25 years since he passed, with Puffy still raking it in. She says, Puffy has been making money off of Biggie's name for longer than Biggie was alive. People keep forgetting. He hadn't turned 25 yet. He was still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Effing Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. It supported all of Bad Boy. His catalog, clearly a Biggie small verse is very valuable. Still 24 when he died. It's been over 25 years. Puffy has been making money on that boy's name longer than he lived. Wright's got some questions about The Commission, an album Biggie was working on before he passed. She vents The Commission. What happened to that album? It was recorded. It was being mixed and mastered upon Biggie's death. It was supposed to have come out that summer after Biggie's album because Biggie's album was slated. He died a week and a half before his album came out. Then The Commission was supposed to come out and that was supposed to be his exit from Bad Boy and then starting his own company. Also, 50 Cent backed Jaguar Wright when he threw his two cents in, telling Diddy to cut it out and let Biggie rest in peace. When Jay Electronica dropped a track called Ghost of Christopher Wallace, 50 wasn't having it. He straight up called out Diddy saying, this is just getting disrespectful. The song doesn't even feel like Biggie, except for that puffy background. The dancing and ad-libs that almost ruin a good song. It's like 50's saying, enough's enough, Diddy. Now here's where it gets kind of creepy. Wright throws in an eerie twist by mentioning the spooky number of deaths tied to Diddy, especially back in the Uptown Records days. She said, I was thinking to myself the other day, Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, Al B. Shure, Heavy D, Puffy and Kim was the longest employee. She was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Kim is dead, Heavy D is dead, Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Ain't that interesting? She continued saying, you want to know what they all had in common though? The survivors and late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Andre was writing a book just before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And Al B was working on a documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. She wonders saying, has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest mother F because it seems that everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the get's beginning are gone, just him remaining. Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left. Puffy and Al, and Al almost died.
Isn't that interesting? Now, it may seem Clive Davis's pre-Grammy party is shaping up to be the ultimate star-studded extravaganza. Entertainment power duo Beyonce and Jay-Z are not just on the guest list, they've officially RSVP'd for the music bash of the year, as spilled by the insiders at page six. The guest lineup reads like a who's who of the entertainment world. We're talking Motown legend Barry Gordy, rock royalty John Bon Jovi, powerhouse couple Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson, and the iconic Ozzy and Sharon Osbourne. It's practically a constellation of A-listers, and they're all gearing up to turn Clive Davis's soiree into the most sought-after and exclusive event of Grammy weekend. And that's not even the end of it. Whispers in the grapevine suggest that the likes of Shania Twain, Ice Spice, Maluma, Charlie Puth, Avril Lavigne, and Demi Lovato are also on the expected guest list. Now here's where things take a turn. Clive Davis's annual pre-Grammy party has had its fair share of dark rumors over the years, with some even linking the event to tragedy tragic incidents like Whitney Houston's passing. You'd think with all that, the A-listers might steer clear, right? It makes you question if we truly know these music legends beyond what the media shows us. Are they really the personas we see on stage and screen? As for Diddy, dude's been keeping a low profile ever since the lawsuit drama knocked on his door. If you scroll through his Instagram, it's all about family birthday messages, and you betcha, those captions are turned off. Can't blame him though, the public's got their foot on his neck and if he so much as unlocks those comments, we can only imagine the chaos that would ensue. But hey, what's your take on all of this? Think Clive Davis has some skeletons in his closet that the world needs to know about? And when do you reckon Diddy will make his first public appearance since the storm hit? Drop your thoughts in the comments, folks. Oh, and as for 50 Cent, we're still waiting on that documentary he teased. Catch you in the next video.